It's Nolan. What's going on, beautiful people? It's the kid, Jay Nolan here. Welcome back to Jay Nolan News. Now, y'all know, ever since I started my YouTube journey, Jesus and Meryl was like one of the big stories that jumped off my page. I did a voiceover just talking about when they split up and ended their thing on Showtime. And I had a super popular video. From there, it gave me the confidence to create the content that I'm now making. So they definitely have a place in my heart because they helped me jump this thing off and I made a nice bit of money off that one video. Ever since the split, everybody's been waiting to see what both of these gentlemen were gonna do. They've gone off to have separate careers, still haven't reached the same success that they were able to have together, but nonetheless, it seems they're both happy, or at least, Jesus is happy. You know what I mean? He was just doing the daily show. He was trying out last month. He did like a week special on there. So they're having different rolling guests come in. And I guess next year they're going to be finding out who they want to bring in as their permanent new host. On the other side of things, I believe that uh, the kid Miro, he went off to do like a baseball podcast. He got into the sports world. I'm assuming he's going to still continue to do that, but he's coming back into the podcast game. He just launched a new show called Victory Light. Now there's there's a subreddit out there or a Reddit page out there, basically under the Jesus and Meryl umbrella, where they're complaining about this new podcast. You know, people are saying that it doesn't have the energy of the Bodega Boys. It doesn't have that same synergy. It's not feeling right. They miss Jesus. Okay? Jesus nice. Jesus Christ, where are you? Somebody who does not feel this way and made it known is the kid Miro. He actually got in the comments of the Reddit group and he put out some scathing statements about his former friend and co-host, Jesus Nice. Goddamn, how the mighty have fallen. Let's get into what he had to say, though. Miro comes in and it says, actually, Miro, this, this, I could have easily found another Jesus type and ran back the same formula, but it would be corny and stifling. I want to grow not just the VL pod, but Victory Light as a production house where you could come do your thing and not get shitty notes from Yakubian CEOs that fill up. I wanted a woman's voice POV and another Bronx guy, but that wasn't just a guy pretending to have gone through all the same things I did. Let's break down a few of the things that he's saying here, shall we? So Victory Light is the name of the podcast, but he also has Victory Light as a production house. So that's a company in totality. So they're going to have other productions that come under this umbrella. He said he could have easily found somebody that filled Jesus' shoes. All right. He said he don't want none of that type shit. He wants people that are original, authentic, and going to bring what they bring on their own accord. He doesn't want somebody that's going to try to fill in the void of what somebody else did. This is a brand new show. This is something different. Um, I love what I did with that. However, this is something new. He also talked about Yakubian CEOs that fill up. Yakubian is Jewish. And he says they fail up, meaning that these people get in position, right? They're over the shows. They're over the network. They put out trash content. They cancel all the good shows. The trash content gets to stay. And regardless of how they fail, they continue to make more money. They end up leaving the company that they're at to go to another company to make more money. And the people that created these things have to go back to the drawing board and figure out what they're going to do next. So he says, fuck that and fuck that other guy. He said, Jesus was just a Bronx dude portraying an image not really being real. He didn't go through the same shit that I went through, but he was fooling me the whole time. This is deep, y'all. To counteract what, my nigga? The only difference between Rainey and Jesus is that Rainey is who he is, a dude from the trenches in the BX who don't got to craft a persona to hide the fact he be watching anime and doing nerdy shit, listening to alt shit, and just generally not being a stereotype. Which is funny because old boy used to visibly bristle when people would professionally try to set us up, like, let's play up that you're from the Bronx, Tim's, chopped cheese, etc., etc. Nigga couldn't wait to break free and sing Olivia Rodrigo at the top of his lungs, and that's what's up. Because niggas could just be they fucking self. Now, please answer the original question. Counteract what? I ain't gonna lie, I had to look up the word bristle. Like, I know what a bristle is in a brush, but I guess as a verb, bristle means he stood upright in fear or anger. Basically saying that at a certain point, uh, Jesus no longer wanted to play into the trope of being from the Bronx, dressing up in Tims and, and jeans and, you know, kind of giving off the New York nigga vibe. At a certain point, he no longer wanted to do that. That's authentically who 
Miro is. That's him all day, every day. Cameras on, cameras off. He's basically saying Jesus was not that guy. Matter of fact, he says that he was into anime, doing nerdy shit, listening to alt shit. Now, when you say alt, are you talking about alternative music or are you talking about alternative as in alt right, as in, you know, some alternative politician, conservative politics type shit, some fucking good old boy shit? Is that what he on? Is he a black Republican? No Jay Z and Nas? Say it ain't so. Comes back, clears his throat. Ahem. Niggas was all on my body like, where's the art? For months. And the type of nigga I am, I would never just tell y'all, you get it when you get it. Suck my dick. Or some other bullshit to keep you hanging. The podcast and the Showtime show is two separate things. With the podcast, bro just stopped, period. Wouldn't respond to calls, texts, or emails. And never responded to anything in the group chat with the whole podcast team, which is just for niggas. Just to be fucking clear. Bro, quit the podcast, okay? Like, no call, no show type shit. I had to put my New York accent on, fuck it. With the show, ratings were soft as fuck. And the hapless execs kept pushing horrible notes on niggas while making us work with a production company whose selling point is, we make shit for cheap. And then pay themselves seven figures before they figure out how to sink the rest of the budget. Having made the show before and having a team that knew how to do the shit we wanted to do, we started shaking and moving. I think all the time what that show would have been if we would have worked with A24 or another company. So let's break this down a little further, too. So he says a lot of people were wondering what's going on with the podcast, right? Because the show got canceled, didn't get renewed. But people still was like, damn, where is the podcast? I can go back to the original. OK, he says the niggas just stopped showing up. Stop responding to the group chat. Stop wanting to be a part of it. No longer want it to be associated. Didn't want to be included. Y'all could keep doing that shit if you want to. Find a replacement. Fuck it. I don't care. I'm about to try to get some money elsewhere. I'm trying to go Hollywood, nigga. I'm trying to elevate, nigga. I'm tired of wearing fucking Tims, nigga. I'm tired of wearing these fucking tough ass jeans, boy. I want to wear suits. So he said, fuck y'all. And then he goes on to continue dissing the executives behind the show, saying that they were giving them a shoestring budget while spending the other seven figures on bullshit. All right. Now, y'all notice the rumor about Victor, the guy with the afro, being the problem. I guess he was their manager for a time period and they portrayed him out to be like some reckless dude. So he says Victor lived in his office crunching numbers. He yelled once. Because the morning he discovered his sister had a medical issue that made her severely immunocompromised, he observed the interim director was inviting randos to the set. OK, so he says Victor's sister got sick. She was immunocompromised. Right. But I guess she was either on set or he had to be around her when she was sick. And he's like, yo, you can't be bringing random people onto the set. We have a controlled environment here. I got to go nurse my sister. I don't know what the deal is with the sister thing. I'm just coming up with a scenario because whatever the case is, she's got to be around people and having randoms on the set is not a good precedent because you don't know where they've been. You don't know what they're carrying and she's easily sick, right? When he was told, A, he tested positive for COVID. So he screamed about that and B, who the randos were and who brought them here? Bro yelled, this is bullshit. Why do we have COVID protocols if motherfuckers go and ignore them? And boom, they got the quote unquote angry nigga they needed to scapegoat. They were already on his ass because he went to HR to complain after the head of production company said, if you ever ask me a question like that, I'm going to fuck you up. When Victor asked, why is writer going to do X? It seems like a role better suited to staff member on some regular shit. There was a black director who was getting abused on set and Victor backed him up when the entire production was gaslighting, bro. He ended up resigning because the HR process was some bullshit. That was the beginning of the execs and heads of production company putting a neon bullseye on Victor's afro. OK, so he's the mean, mad black guy with an afro. Let's make him out to look bad. When shit goes bad, he can be the scapegoat. We can blame it on him, put it on him. And if that don't go right, say Miro was a fucking asshole. He says, let me wrap this here, but I'll say this. One or two of y'all here on this sub have seen texts and emails and know exactly what the deal is. That's why they so convinced. But again, 
I'm not about to start posting screenshots to win some imaginary argument. I know exactly what the nigga did to derail the whole shit, and I'm still playing it close to the vest because I square up and knock this nigga's head off his body before I get on some posting convos. Erica Mina bullshit. My God, he just said he will knock Deezus' head off his body if he ever come out refuting what he has to say. This is how badly their friendship has deteriorated since they were doing the show. I thought it was just creative differences. It sounds like real beef. The good thing here for everyone out there, for all the Jesus and Meryl fans, is that what they're doing today is authentic to both of them. Jesus, he went to go do the Daily Show. He's working with Comedy Central, right? He's suited and booted nowadays. He's wearing mock neck turtlenecks and stuff like that. He's got the black boy cheese going on. He wants to be in that sphere, right? He wants to be... I guess, seemingly in the Jordan Peele category. The kid Miro, on the other hand, he wants to continue his authenticity. He wants to continue to represent the X the way Big Pun, Fat Joe, and so many others have the birthplace of hip hop. That is what is true to him. Even when you look at this thumbnail here, you see he still had a fitted hat, two chains on, and they're at a big party, black tie affair. Jesus, on the other hand, bow tie, tuxedo, you see the contrast. So I'm happy for them. I hate that this came to this, but I'm glad that we're finally getting some sort of resolution or some sort of information around the mystery of their show's ending, why things went the way they did, why it was so abrupt, why we haven't seen them together, despite the fact that early on when it happened, they were trying to keep it close to the vest, as he said, right? Um, we still cool. We're just going in separate paths. We have created differences, try to play the PR game. Now, Miro's taking the gloves off. I don't know why he's taking the gloves off. I don't know what Jesus has done behind the scenes, right? Because it sounds like there's been further interaction, further dispute. And he like, bro, if this nigga ever come outside and play with me, I'm going to fucking knock his block off. He going to go home looking like, hey, Arnold, after I stomp his shit in. Again, you hate to see it. Let me know what y'all think of this down below in the comments. Are y'all going to be tuned in to Victory Light? Do you care about Victory Light? Like, do you care about what they individually have going on? It seems like the synergy just ain't happening, but I wish them all the best. Let me know what y'all think again down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share the video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the post notification bell for all updates, and I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. Yeah. King of my city in Coda Sack. Uh. Coming, I swing like soldier rag. Yeah. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Yeah. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Yeah. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Yeah. Spinning the block for the gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. Yeah. We don't do beef on computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. Uh -huh. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully abreast. Yeah. I was ready for years and they doubted me. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Cross my mind, I came back with some battery Stand for my honor, but you run no counter Packing a stick with a drum. Wanna catch my bad one fumble I done came too far to be humble